Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of our invites for being here today for a very special celebration, very special day. Thank you. We are gathered to honor our fallen heroes and their families. Those who in the performance of their storm duties paid the ultimate sacrifice. For 2021, year to date, 120 as of this morning, a San Luis Opusi, California officer was shot and killed while serving a search warrant. From those 120, two of them, Valley officers. 362 for last year, three of which Valley officers. We are committed to never forgetting and to always honor our fallen heroes and their families. We thank you for joining us in our celebration of remembrance. I now ask that you join Officer Joseph Campos, one of our agency chaplains, as he provides our invocation. Yo, you all can bow your heads, please. Father God, we give you thanks for allowing us to gather here today in honor of our great men and women who have sacrificially given their lives while serving their communities. Father, we understand that the strong men and women that protect people you love stand on that thin blue line that you instituted in the 13th chapter of the Book of Romans. And while we gather here today to honor these heroes, we ask that you continue to protect and comfort the families who also sacrificed while their loved one went out day after day, night after night, in service of their fellow men. Father, we not only pray for the fallen, but we ask that you grant wisdom, strength, and courage to the Blue family that continues to stand on that line and sacrifice their lives so that the ones we serve and protect can rest assured that we have their six. Father, we ask all this in your name. Amen. I now introduce our mayor, Honorable Trey Mendes, who along with our city commission have been supportive of our agency as he reads the City of Brunswick Proclamation honoring National Police Week.
Thank you to everybody that's here. It's, it's certainly great to see such wonderful support for our police department and for all the officers that are out there. I know that today is about honoring uh, our fallen heroes, but I'd also like to take a moment to honor all of you as well for your service and your dedication to our city. And know that I support you now and always, uh, whether I may or not, you all have my support and, and I cannot thank you enough for everything that you do for us on a daily basis. Chief, uh, this is a proclamation on behalf of the city of Brownsville. Uh, designating May 15, 2021 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and May 9th through 15th, 2021 as National Police Week. Whereas the Brownsville Police Department was founded in 1859 in Brownsville, Texas and is comprised of 247 law enforcement officers led by Police Chief Felix Sauceda and more than 800,000 law enforcement officers serve in communities across the United States. The Brownsville Police Department is committed to providing proactive, professional and effective public safety and community service by employing integrity and fairness through community partnerships for the enhancement of the quality of life in the city of Brownsville. Whereas Peace Officers Memorial Day was first established on October 1st, 1961, when United States President John F. Kennedy signed a bill into law designating May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day. Today, Peace Officers Memorial Day and National Police Week pay tribute to local, state, and federal law enforcement officers who have died or who have been disabled in the line of duty. Whereas in 2020, 73 law enforcement officers died in the line of duty across the state of Texas, and a total of 360 officers were killed across the United States. The city of Brownsville and the Brownsville Police Department mourn the loss of the men and women who, without regard to self-interest, so courageously defended the law and their neighbors. And on May 15, 2021, U.S. flags should be flown at half-staff in honor of fallen officers and their families. Whereas, all citizens must recognize the responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices that local law enforcement officers make daily to ensure the safety and well-being of their community. And whereas, by supporting the efforts of local law enforcement officers and reporting crime, the residents of Brownsville, Texas may aid the Brownsville Police Department in providing a vital public service that includes safeguarding life and property and working tirelessly to protect the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by the virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city and on behalf of all of our citizens, do hereby designate May 15, 2021 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and May 9th through 15th as National Police Week and further call upon the residents of Brownsville to take part in appropriate ceremonies and observances in which they join together in commemorating law enforcement officers past and present who, by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities, have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in so doing have established for themselves an enduring reputation for preserving the rights and securities of all citizens done on this fourth day of May 2021 by myself as mayor and the rest of the city commission. It's been an honor. Thank you, Chief, for all your work. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, you and the commission for all of your support. We would now like to uh, call on uh, city manager, Noel Bernal, to share a few words with us. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Good morning to all. Thank you for joining us this morning on this very important day. Uh, there is no script uh, that I can use to really express the heartfelt thank you and gratitude that we have to those that are being highlighted on the screen before you, their families, their colleagues. Uh, really, the service, the, the selfless service is, is something that is, is hard to speak to. The best way to honor is to be here to reflect amongst ourselves to really think about what it is that the men and women 
that wear the uniform are really asked to do. And, and just think about that for a moment. And I want to challenge you all this morning because last year and today as we stand here, it's, it's very different. If you look at the mask that we're all wearing, there's, there's more than what meets the eye. The challenges that public safety faces today only grow. It challenges us as a community, us as an organization, the governing body, the mayor and, and commissioners to really look at and examine ways to better provide and better support our law enforcement. Uh, to expand a bit on what the mayor was saying, uh, in late 2019 and early 2020, the mayor and commissioners worked on a strategic plan. They dedicated hours to think about what was their important priority or priorities for the community. Of those six pillars that they worked on, one of those was public safety. That gives us, as an administration, the responsibility and the commitment to carry out those goals. And I won't spell out all that goes into the public safety pillar, but what I will say is that another form of honoring and appreciating the service to those that have given all is to provide for, the, for those that are here today that continue to serve. Within the city of Brownsville, we have been committed and we've partnered with the chief and our police department to continue supporting their needs. There's mental, emotional, spiritual needs. There's also needs to evolve and modernize, providing services that might need to reflect modern day policing. We've done that. We, we're making investments, replacing outdated systems, things that make their jobs better and easier. Never perfect, but that does reflect our commitment to helping them do their work and serve better. That has a major impact in what they do, and that to me is a way of honoring what they do each and every day. Within the city of Brownsville, with the support of the mayor and commissioners, with the leadership of Chief Salceda, we are committed to doing that and reflecting for the community and really for the region. I, I see there's regional police, depart, uh, police chiefs here really, really reflecting that model, that service approach of building deep relationships with the community, of evolving to meet community needs and evolving to meet officer needs. I want to thank Chief for, well, for inviting me and for allowing me to say a few words. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Thank you. As I stood out there in the crowd waiting for my turn, I was looking at the screens uh, where they're showing the fallen. And each one of those pictures is more than a picture. Each one of those faces is more than a face. From that particular day, some wife, some mother, some brother, some sister, got a knock on the door, got a phone call, and were advised that their loved one had been killed in the line of duty. That is why we're here today. There are many stories, and unfortunately, each one of those is true, and each one of those is devastating. One of those stories that I'd like to share with you today, to bring it home, to really show that, that it's more than a face and a name. And that's a story of a sheriff in a small town county in Texas who had served as sheriff for more than 25 years. Nobody would dare run against him. He was an institution there in that county until one day, a cold day in January of 1991, he was brutally murdered by two men who ambushed him at his house two men that he had arrested. That county was Dimmitt County, my county. That sheriff was my uncle. So this day to me is very personal. This day to me touches my heart, not just for my uncle, but for each one of those folks on that screen that were killed in the line of duty. And that is why we're here today, to honor them not just today, but every day. And to think about their families, the sons and daughters that are gonna grow up without their father, without their mother, at the graduation, at the wedding. Think about that. We do, but people don't. And that is why today, across our cities and across our nation, law enforcement is wrongfully 
under attack. Law enforcement has been made the scapegoat for some of our faults, and that is wrong. I'm here to tell you that our democracy needs law enforcement. Our democracy needs strong law enforcement, and each one of us has the duty to support them. So I stand before you today and ask you to stand up with me and proclaim your support for law enforcement. I stand before you asking all the citizens to recommit to supporting law enforcement. I stand before you and challenge the parents, yes, the parents, to teach your children about respecting law enforcement. I equally challenge law enforcement to protect yourselves at all time, but to treat each individual with the respect and dignity that they deserve. We are a great city. We are a great county and a great state and country. And one of those reasons is because of each one of you out here, regardless of the color of your uniform, regardless of the shape of your badge, you are law enforcement. And I, Louis Sainz, support you. So thank you, Chief, for putting this together. May God bless law enforcement and may God bless Cameron County. Thank you. Good morning. If I could direct everyone's attention to this table right here to my left. The table of honor. The table with its place settings is a way of symbolizing the fact that members of our profession are missing from this event. As you can see, the table is set for one, though the number is many. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to serve their communities. The candle is lit, symbolizing their spirit to serve. The glass is inverted. They cannot drink or toast with us this day. A slice of lemon on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. The single rose displayed in the vase is to remind us of their families and loved ones. The salt above, upon the plate is symbolic of their tears. The blue ribbon tied so prominently on the base reminds us the thin blue line which stands strong before those who would destroy law and order in our great nation. Many of us served with these peace officers and called them partner. We relied on them, depended on their might and their aid. We called them brothers, we called them sisters. They watch over us still as we honor them today. Thank you. riderless horse. The tradition of the riderless horse, also called the comparison horse, leading police and military funerals is a centuries old practice and signifies the passing of a warrior. A comparison horse refers to its ornamental coverings, the bridle, the saddle, the blanket, and a pair of empty boots facing backwards in the stirrups. The boots facing backwards symbolize a rider's last journey as he or she looks back on loved ones. And with this, our ceremony concludes. We ask that you join us for refreshments in our front lobby area. And once again, thank you all. Thank you very much for being here today.